Hi guys, I'm John and I'm going to show you how to use Chaos Destructible Meshes in Unreal Engine 5. So I'm using Unreal Engine 5 Preview Version 1 and I've opened up a new first person template project. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab this blue cube here in the corner by the first person weapon. And I'm going to go to the toolbar here and select Fracture Mode. You can also do uh, Shift 6 if you want as a shortcut. And once I'm in fracture mode here, I need to select new to create a new geometry collection from the static mesh I have selected. And so I will just accept this uh, save name here and click create. And now I've got my geometry collection highlighted and I can use these fracture tools here. And I'm not going to uh, go into too much detail about any of these other tools in this video. I'm going to stick with uniform for now, keep it simple. And I'm going to stick with these default settings as well and just go ahead and click Fracture. So I can see my result here, uh, both in the outliner here and here in level statistics. I've fractured this mesh into 19 pieces. I have 19 level 1 pieces and uh, those show up here in my outliner as well. So what I'm going to do is apply the uh, same cutting tool again, uh, but it'll choose a new random seed here for the actual uh, cutting sites and uh, I'm going to fracture these 19 pieces that are already there into even more pieces. So if I s click fracture again here, uh, now we can see I have a level 2 fracture of 98 total pieces. And in the outliner here we can see the original uh, 19 pieces. Each one now has uh, several sub pieces depending on how many pieces it got broken up into. Okay. I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to fracture this again and that's going to create a level 3 fracture here of 265 total pieces. Uh, out of those 98 pieces, now each of those has now been split into several pieces and you can see that in the outliner here as well. Alright, so I'm done with that for now. I'm going to go back to select mode here and we can see all of these different uh, pieces that we've broken this mesh up into. Uh, they're all highlighted here as different bone colors. Uh, and so to turn that off, I can go here to Details, Search for Bone, and I'm just going to unselect Show Bone Colors. So now our cube looks uh, normal again. And what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, break up this mesh by grabbing the first person weapon here and hitting it with the projectiles. And so what I need to do here is make some changes to the first person projectile. So I'm going to go ahead in the content drawer here and under first person blueprints, uh, I'm going to open up the first person projectile. And the way this works is it's set up with a projectile movement component. So that takes care of uh, the initial speed here and the gravity uh, as well as bouncing and everything else. Uh, and there's another little blueprint here as well so that if you hit something that's simulating physics uh, it's going to add an impulse at that location and then uh, destroy the sphere. So this little setup here is so that you can hit these blue cubes that are placed around the scene and these are physics enabled cubes and it creates an impulse at the location of the, uh, of the hit and then destroys the sphere. And so if you hit anything else, it just bounces around uh, as per the projectile movement component. Um, okay, and so since the projectile movement component is taking care of that, the actual sphere itself, if I select the static mesh itself here, or the collision component, uh, th these are set to no collision. Okay, and so I can uh, go here to the sphere under collision, presets, no collision, and I'm going to set this to block all. And now if I try again here, I'm still not going to get any results. And that's because, unfortunately, this sphere is too small to create uh, the size of impact we need to get that cube broken or moving. So one more change I'm going to make here in the projectile blueprint. I'm going to go to the viewport here just for a second, take a look at the sphere. And with the sphere selected, I'll go to Scale and the default is set to 0.1 in all of these axes. I'm just going to double it up to 0.2. Alright, so I've doubled the size of the projectile. I'm going to try again now. Alright, perfect. So that's breaking now for sure. It's breaking actually into pretty well all of its 
uh, pieces, all of those 265 pieces. And that's not really what I wanted to happen there. I could have just broke it once into 265 pieces if that's what I wanted, right? So to make use of those different fracture levels that we made, uh, what I need to do is make a couple changes here. Um, by default, when you create a new fractured mesh, it sets the mass density pretty heavy. And so I'll find that file in the content drawer uh, in the root folder here. This is the geometry collection we created when I clicked new in fracture mode. So I'll open that up and we can see here the default uh, settings is to set mass as density and to set that to 2500. And so that's uh, kilograms per cubic meter. 2500, that's pretty heavy. That's something like uh, solid brick or concrete. And so um, it's adding to its own destruction under its own weight when it's hitting the, the back wall there. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna lower this quite a bit. I'm gonna set it to 100 kilograms per cubic meter. And I'll save that and we'll try it again here. All right, so now we're getting a lot less destruction on impact. Uh, we're seeing more of those original uh, 19 pieces from our level one breakage. And that's what I was after here. And so now if I uh, hit these with some more damage, for example, now we can see our, our pieces are breaking up into the next level, uh, level two pieces and ultimately into uh, level three tiny little pieces. So that's basically how you create a destructible mesh and uh, how to control, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to control obviously how it's going to break. And I'm gonna go into that in more detail in some other videos as well as discussing uh, physics fields. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed watching and we'll see you in the next video.